Chase here is actually part of a group of superpowered teenagers. In fact, you may have heard of them. They call themselves The Runaways, and they have actually had a show that ran for three seasons on Hulu. Now, this show is kind of hinted at being MCU canon, but its validity in the MCU is no more than the Netflix Marvel shows. So, I mean, it's really your choice if you want Runaways on Hulu to be canon. I personally don't, but since it can be perceived as canon, I'm going to go ahead and put Chase on the MCU edition list since he was one of the main characters. Now, the Runaways are exactly what they sound like. Their parents are all bad apples and these kids banded together to stop them. That's a little bit of a simplified synopsis, but that's all you really need to know. Chase in the Runaway show is served as the show's thirst trap, when in this game he's portrayed as how he should be, you know, a nerd. Chase doesn't have superpowers, but rather has a pair of gauntlets that he calls fistigons. No, that's not a joke by the way, but I mean, his fists allow him to shoot energy blasts and punch things, like really hard. That's translated into this game as the laser and cracked wall abilities. Also, Chase has agility just to add a bit of flair. Tigra is yet another cat-themed heroine. In fact, she was originally called The Cat before taking on the Tiger alias. Tigra has quite a few abilities here that are something cats do. I mean, for one, she has agility, as is protocol around here for female characters, but it also makes sense with her cat-like nature. In addition, she can dig, which is something pretty much all animal-themed characters can do. Also, she has scan, but she doesn't do the minigame that most scan characters have to do. For her, her heightened sense bypass the minigame and reveal the hidden thing immediately. Finally, her last ability is also new to the series, wall climbing. It's exactly what it sounds like. You can jump onto any vertical surface and climb on it. You come to find that characters with that wall climber are either small and nimble or just huge and digging their meaty hands into the brick wall. But I mean, we'll see that when we get to it. Agent 13, also known as Sharon Carter, is part of the Civil War DLC character pack and has has a quite interesting past with one Steve Rogers. Now, Sharon Carter is the great niece of Peggy Carter, the founder of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the main reason why Steve time traveled back in time to have a life with her. That didn't stop Steve from sharing one long, sloppy kiss with Sharon Carter with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier watching from a car. After the events of Civil War, Sharon Carter became a fugitive and is why she was pretty rude to Sam and Bucky when she showed up in the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. I mean, she says she low-key hates them for not getting her pardoned, but I think Steve's bouncing over to another timeline to be with her great aunt also probably played a role. I mean, I don't know why they opted to call her Agent 13 in this game when Sharon Carter is definitely what most people know her by, but Agent 13 has all the fixings of what a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent should have in this game. Agent 13's four abilities are S.H.I.E.L.D., Agility, Technology, and Explosive. All of that makes solid sense to me. You know, since there's an actual character well, not character, but an entity in the MCU also called the Destroyer that's also in this game. It's strange that they decide to put this guy in the roster as one of the unorthodox Marvel characters. This just isn't any Destroyer. It's the Mighty Destroyer. You can tell by his vampire-like appearance and the subtle skull that smack dab on his chest. What you wouldn't come to expect, though, is that his main powers are similar to that of Ant-Man. Yeah, this dude shrinks. It totally takes away any sort of menacing aura that you may get from this guy. Like, yeah man, that dude kind of looks threatening, and then he shrinks. Funniest unintentional thing in this game. But since this guy is a shrinker, he also has all of the abilities associated with it. He has the size ability, great ability, and stealth ability. And as an added bonus, this guy has agility too. I mean, if that's a bonus, I don't know. Bengal is a daredevil villain who had some surprisingly morbid history that led him to becoming Bengal. Bengal, as a child, had his family killed as a result of a war crime committed by a troop of U.S. soldiers during the Vietnam War. That tragedy fueled his need to train to become a martial arts master and exact revenge. It was thanks to the Punisher when Bengal chose to give mercy to the leader of the troop of soldiers who went on to become a priest. Bengal, in the end, was able to retire and open a martial arts school. 
Looks like TT Games forced him out of retirement to put him in this game. Bengal has four abilities, and they're all pretty unorthodox as far as martial artists go. He has the automatic scan, agility, and dig, just like Tigra. Well, Bengal is named after the Bengal Tiger, but Bengal, the Marvel character, does not have any Tiger-like powers like this game would make you believe. I think TT Games was just a little confused. Oh, and Bengal has Cracked Wall as his fourth and last ability. I mean, even if Bengal had Tiger-like powers, he still shouldn't have the power to bust through walls. I don't know. The big dog of Hydra himself, Red Skull. The Hydra, and therefore the shield ability, only makes sense with this guy. Then again though, Red Skull should not have the shield ability. I mean, can you imagine Red Skull rolling up to the helicarrier and handing in his resume? And being like, man, I hope I get the job. The biggest thing on his resume would be head of Hydra during World War II. That can't look good for his application. In addition to his Hydra status, he also has explosive, and for some reason, agility. Red Skull being the leader of Hydra and Captain America's greatest foe, you would think he might be a bit high on the list, but here he is a little below halfway. Luckily though, this isn't the last we'll see of Red Skull, and he may just as well be redeemed at that point. Melter is such a creatively thought out villain. The guys over at Marvel just said, let's create a guy who melts things and then name him Melter. Really, a round of applause for these guys. They really knocked it out of the park. The Melter was a founding member of the Masters of Evil after being screwed over by Tony Stark with his US military weapons deals. And Melter here was one of the characters you play as in the Masters of Evil DLC level. The Melter is a wielder of the, the Melting Ray. Again, again, great creativity from Marvel. That all being said, the Melter has the laser ability because of his Melting Rays. But he has a few other abilities to sweeten the deal. Melter can also throw sticking bombs and interact with technology panels and use the scan ability. So in total, Melter has four abilities, which is totally more than I would expect from this guy just by looking at him. While we went over the big dog of Hydra, now we're going over the big dog of Asgard. In the same part at that, I always found it funny that Odin convinced Thor that he doesn't need a hammer to harness his powers as a, the god of thunder and Ragnarok, but Thor's main quest and the very next appearance in Infinity War was to get a new weapon because he can't use his powers without one. Just a tad bit of character regression always is a little funny to me. Though I must admit, for being technically a god, Odin is kind of disappointing in this game. Now firstly, I'll get regenerative health out of the way. Odin has it, okay? Even though Thor doesn't, and Thor is in the same boat as Odin when, when it becomes their godhood, Odin has it and Thor doesn't. Also, Odin has telekinesis for some reason. I'm not sure if Odin has actually displayed telekinesis in the MCU, but I suppose it can't hurt. Odin's last two abilities have to do with his staff there. The laser that emits from the staff not only can melt gold Lego, but can also power up electricity generators. But despite all this, I feel like Odin is lacking. In what way, I don't exactly know, but it but it feel, feels like when you double jump and Odin does a roll and stuff, like a lift into the air, like Thor, it just doesn't feel right. I, I, I know Odin doesn't fly, but he really should, you know, just to appease me. Swordsman, also another creative name on Marvel's part, has actually shown up in the MCU rather recently. In case you didn't know, Jack... Why you spell Jack Duquesne from Hawkeye was a suspected murderer for most of the show. This dude in the comics was the swordsman. I mean, Jack was exceptional at sword fighting, if that wasn't a good enough hint for you. So, with all that being said, let's add swordsman to the MCU edition list, shall we? I gotta say this though. Swordsman has some abilities that are totally out of left field. Turns out, his sword holds some magical abilities. Or is it really high tech? I don't know. It's something like that. Swordsman can shoot electric balls out of his sword, which is the default as opposed to actually swinging the sword. Anyway, his magic sword can both power generators with electricity and melt gold lego with laser. In addition, Swordsman can smash cracked walls and deflect beams. So yeah, all of those are not very Swordsman-like.
Now, remember when I went over the bazooka Nick Fury, where the only thing that separated him from the standard Nick Fury was the bazooka and gave him another ability and therefore automatically made him better? Agent Coulson has the same exact situation here, except this Agent Coulson has that destroyer gun that he wielded as a threat to Loki, who subsequently killed him. Just to recap, the standard Agent Coulson has explosive shield and technology. The destroyer gun Agent Coulson has all of those, and also the destroyer gun, which gives him the laser ability. And really, that's about all there is to say. I don't know why they felt the need to make a whole variant just to give Agent Coulson the destroyer gun, but I think this is definitely more deserving than the bazooka variant for Nick Fury.